Service Nation, so excited to see you today. We are going to talk about um, probably the how to get away from the biggest killer of service businesses, which is service business owner in the truck. And there's two kinds of being in the truck, and we're going to talk about both of them. One is physically in the truck, right? If you are a pool guy who uh, owns a pool cleaning business, I'm doing the here, huge air quotes, but you clean pools all day, you don't own a cleaning business, you own a route, right? You own a job. Um or an H, you know, it doesn't matter, pick your service. If you were physically providing the service, you own a job, um, not a business. If you are like, no, no, Mike, I haven't, you know, I haven't been a tech or, or gone out in the field for years. I sit in the office and futz around with whatever is, uh, futz, by the way, F-U-T-Z, don't, uh, I want to be clear on that one, futz around in the office all day, putting out fires and, and dealing with whatever nonsense comes up. That's another version of, that's kind of like the, the slightly more sophisticated version, but more frustrating, honestly. I'd rather just be, you know, for our service guys and gals, I'd rather be doing something and, and <laughs> getting it done than just putting out a constant stream of fires. So we're going to talk about how to get you out of the truck and really how to get you out of the office, which are huge main skills. All right. That said, as we dive into how to do that, if you are getting value from this show, please uh, subscribe, rate, and review. We just are starting this thing out, and we're building a community, and uh, we're going to look at you. If we, if there's tons of feedback and engagement and uh, joining the community, letting us know, we will put lots of time and money to give you more service. If not, we'll figure, hey, the market has spoken, not interested, and uh, kind of go back to helping the other service owners that we serve. So uh, subscribe, rate, and review to the podcast if you go to growmyservicecompany.com. Not a blessed thing for sale, but lots of opportunities to get involved with the Facebook group. I think you can get a copy of my book. Um, subscribe to the podcast, all that good stuff. All right. Um, that said, I, I kind of want to back off to when I was in the truck and what that felt like and then how that worked through to getting out and what that looked like in my business and my, in my life. Um, so some of you may or may not know, I started my first, or sorry, I purchased a business when I was, um, 20, I can't remember if it was 22 or 23. I think it was 22. And I bought a service master commercial cleaning franchise. Um, my wife and I, uh, had worked and worked and saved up and we lived on my salary and like saved all of hers. I think we'd save $10,000 and I was born broke. So $10,000 to me back in the nineties, late nineties, um, was just a ton of money. It was all the money, right? It was everything I had. And we put all that down and borrowed tons of money on top of that to get the service master commercial cleaning franchise, my first service business. Um, the good folks at Service Master before they'll let you mop floors under their name. Uh, you gotta you gotta go there do their two week training in Memphis. First time I'd been to Memphis. Still, first time I went to a Benny Hanna's. By the way, we all went to Benny Hanna's afterwards. I thought it was so fancy. <laughs> Being young, poor Mike I was very impressed by the Benny Hanna's. Um, yeah, all that training I went through, and the one thing I remember is the Benny Hanna's. So funny. The first week we all sat there with our ties, kind of in a little classroom. Uh, or actually a bigger classroom, feeling very important. And I remember I was the youngest guy there by far, so I was just like taking notes, writing everything down. It was probably all basic business one-on-one stuff, but it seemed mind-blowing to me at the time. And then the second week, we were, uh, I think it was still at their office, but we're like stripping and waxing floors and cleaning stuff, and it was a uh, you know, fun story. So we got back, and I'm ready to take over the world with my new, you know, I'm trained, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to take over the world with a cleaning company. And um, I lived in Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, I lived at Born and Raised in Phoenix. We just moved there, got this business, um, like one flight coming in per night. We got in late that night, woke up the next morning, went out the front door, and there was literally a yellow sticky on my door that had four words. I still remember the black pen, the black like Sharpie, four words. It said, we quit, dash, the employees. <laughs> and we, this was my first day back. And there was like four employees, right? This wasn't like a hundred of them. And I still to this day don't know what happened. I had I'd met them once. Um, I think they came over to our little apartment and we talked for a little bit. Like nothing happened, right? There was no, I maybe, or something obviously happened. I just, I wasn't aware. Um, anyway, still to this day, I have no idea if the owners kind of, I have no idea. Don't know what the scoop was, but I do know that they had quit and it was eight o'clock that morning. And because it was a commercial cleaning company, I had three employees worth of work to do uh, starting five o'clock that night. So I was immediately in the truck, right? Um, and it's funny because I often tell my clients, you know, I wish they didn't know how to do the thing that they know how to do, right? Like oftentimes guys are really good at um, being 
you know, HVAC service tech. So they start a business with the HVAC service tech business and they think, oh, because I'm good at the thing, I'll be good at owning the business. But then I realize they're completely different skill set. So my favorite clients are the ones that can't do the service that they have, right? Um, but when my employees quit that day, all of them, I was pretty dang glad I could clean, right? <laughs> and clean I did, right? Uh, at that point, I would have given a kidney or both my kidneys uh, for that company because I was all in, right? My not just all the money I had, a bunch of money that I owed, plus giving my word and just kind of putting my name out there like this is going to succeed. Um, so started cleaning um, and, you know, we did get a way to, um, you know, hire, took, I don't know, a month or something, get a cleaning uh, entirely, get back out of the truck, right? I thought it was going to be out the whole time, but uh, surprise, that's how business works. Um, but I got burned out, right? First, I got burned out from cleaning real quick, but we got out of that fairly quickly. And then next, from getting calls in the middle of the night and just constantly putting out fires. I remember um, when I sold it, the guy that was buying it was looking at the financials like, are you sure? Like, you know, kind of, I don't want to say not trusting, but like, are these real? Are you whatever? And I was like, dude, the money's there, I'm telling you, but the business just sucks, right? Like, I was just like, this is not a business you want because we had uh, clients seven days a week and um, we had, this is, some of the things we teach against, but we had one restaurant that, um, I think closed at like two in the morning or something. So we couldn't be there to, you know, and then even after that, they had to, um, you know, clean, whatever we could clean between like 2am and 6am or some weird hours. Um, and I still remember, you know, getting the call. Um, so all that said, I was just, I was burned out on surprise emergencies, putting out fires and I desperately wanted to grow. But what I really wanted was desire to control my life and my business, right? And I still remember getting that call on a Sunday night with the employees outside the Applebee's. Um, you know, they set off the alarm or forgot the keys or something was going on. And it was Sunday night at like 2, 3, 4 in the morning. And I had to get up to be to work on Monday, like four hours later. Um, that, I think, was what finally kind of broke the straw. I had a good business making good money, and had I just been able to solve that problem, right? I got out of the truck in terms of physically cleaning, but I was in the truck of dealing with all the nonsense where a lot of you guys or gals might be. That was when I decided to sell that thing, and I, you know, I sold it for like three times what I'd paid. We bought a manufacturing business. I, I could have grown that business so much better, done so many different things if... Uh, Today, Mike could just talk to old Mike and give him some heads up. But we sold that thing and bought a manufacturing business. And the beautiful shift that happened with that is I didn't know how to do make the things that my company made. We did fabric and, and welding and stuff like that. I didn't know how to do any of that. So that I was in that position I now coach my people to be in, which is not being able to do the skill that you sell, right? So because of that, um, I was able to get out of the truck forever, right? Like, um, I don't, it's so long ago, I remember how often I've cleaned after I got out of the, you know, out of the truck the first time. Not often, but enough. Um, but now I could never build anything. So that was nice. It forced me to figure out how to hire because I couldn't, I couldn't create the services that, of the company that I owned. But I just changed getting out of the truck of cleaning or being in the field to the truck of my office, right? I kept working in my business, doing busy work without, doing the key, even recognizing the key things I need to do to grow my business. I was just putting out fires all day. Um, you know, and I, I just had this belief that, well, you know, I didn't know that lack of education wasn't what was holding me back. Right. I was like, well, if I went to business school or had an MBA, then, then I would be able to do something different. It was just really the lack of understanding what my real job was. Right. I thought my job was Superman, right? I put on my cape, you know, someone calls with a problem, I put on my cape and solve it. And then an employee or a customer or a vendor, anybody calls, put on my cape and I solve that problem. I thought that was my job, which is more of a babysitting job than it is a business owner job, right? And the problem is I got paid more like a babysitter than I did as a business owner. Um, so that led me to kind of, I don't know if I got this now, then, but I, I, looking back, I get it. If I was honest with myself, I was stuck at that same level because my ability to kind of put out fires and just at the level of problems I was dealing with dictated the level of the business that I could grow. And I was stuck at that same level. And if I was honest with myself and you and feel free, let me know if this is how you feel or how you are. I, that business probably wasn't as good as a job. I was working harder. I wasn't making as much, um, the smart thing would have do is just get a job. I would have made more money and could have just worked 40 hours a week and not, not stress so much. But the problem with that is 
the reason I stayed is the opportunity, right? So many of us are like, well, but in business, I can make anything I want. I can make all I want, which is absolutely the truth. But the problem is when we stay out of a decent paying job to go to an opportunity that um, to make all that you want and have the life that you want, but we don't take advantage of that opportunity. It's the worst of both worlds, right? I should have just gotten a job or taken advantage of the opportunity, but I was too stubborn to not to get a job because I was so committed to owning a business, but I didn't have the skills or systems or processes I need to take advantage of the opportunity and I couldn't move to the next level. So it was really the, 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 the worst of both worlds. And I left working for someone else for this opportunity that I was never going to get. Right. So I finally discovered, uh, looking back what this looked like when I sold my last brick and mortar business, um, I realized the reason I didn't, I kept working in my business is I didn't have a business model that would provide money for me to provide, to hire the right day to day operations. Right. I didn't have systems and processes in place that would identify the key skills I needed to hire out or a business model that worked well enough that I had enough money to hire those people out. Right. I always felt like I was broke and I couldn't afford talent. Um, and once I sold my last brick and mortar business, I kind of figured my way around that. Um, the reason I didn't have money is I'd not mastered really what I think the owner's job, the first owner's job is getting the clients that I needed, or more importantly, getting a, so again, there's, there's a, in the truck version of that in the truck version is I go out and make rain, right? I'm the guy I've put on my Superman hat instead of putting, solving problems, which I, I was doing a lot of, uh, I would go get clients too, right? Oh, I'm the owner. They want to talk to me. I'm a good salesperson which is fine if I love working all the time and I want the business to be limited by the number of clients I could get. But I realized when I sold my last brick and mortar business and I started kind of the online world and coaching that I had to get better at creating systems and processes to get more clients than I needed. That was the one thing, the first thing, right? And we'll talk about all the things that you need to be doing as an owner. But first and foremost, if you don't have an automated system to get more clients than you need, you got to get that done because that provides the fuel, the money, the freedom to build a real business. Until you have that, none of the other problems really matter, right? Nothing happens until someone makes a sale. Um, I realize, and this is a big shift. If you guys are taking notes, gals, this is a this is a this is a writer downer, as Dan Kennedy would say. I realized I wasn't in the service business; I was in the business of getting clients to my service company. Um, once I solved that problem, made that shift of, I went from I own a construction company, a car dealership, a manufacturing company, and I got to do all these things associated with that. To my real job is making sure there are plenty of leads plenty of lead flows and systems to automate those leads to turn into clients. Once I realized that was the business I was in and the, the, the service we happened to offer really didn't matter, right? That's how we can coach lots of different service companies. Whether you provide plumbing or HVAC or electrici electricity or landscaping or cleaning, um, once you realize that that's not the business you're in, you're in the business of getting creating systems and one of, the, one of those main systems getting clients to that business, that's a shift. Then you can really move to the next level. Um, and once I realized that that was my problem, I could shift. Um, once I, I could shift my focus to that and get that done. And once I solved the getting, getting customers problem, create a system, I started seeing all the other problems that solved with cash flow, with lack of ability to focus, with lack of ability to hire. Um, I'll tell you, it's, this is probably most clearly, uh, illustrated for me. Uh, my last brick and mortar business was a car dealership, which is a lot of moving parts, right? Much, I would say I've had service, but and that's semi a service business, but uh, more complex than most of the service businesses I've, I've owned in that you have to go to market, find 50 or hundred cars every month or a couple hundred, depending on how big your dealership is, recondition them, which is a super active process. Um, stage them, pay for them, work with the financing, get clients in the door, fall out with clients, get sales processes, have finance managers, have someone on the back end to make, there's just a, mechanics. There's just, there's a whole fleet of systems and processes of people you need to make that happen. And I was putting out fires. I was doing what I do. I would just run around getting, and I had a team and I had a staff, but I was still doing little pieces of everything. Once I sold that, one of, uh, actually a guy that was one of my finance managers called me after I had started um, coaching others, wanting help, he was uh, now the general manager of another car dealership, and he wanted help growing it. So I went to help him, and I looked in, and I'll be danged if this guy, and he was, you know, maybe a hundred thousand dollar a year employee, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but this wasn't like a two or three hundred thousand dollar guy, right? And it wasn't a fifty thousand dollar guy, maybe a hundred thousand dollar guy. He was running the whole dadgum dealership um, just for that. So I realized, looking back, holy crap, I could have hired a guy for a hundred grand a year 
And he was doing a better job than I was probably, right? He was a better operator, right? Like, so I could have paid a hundred grand a year just to have somebody manage the, the procurement of the cars, managing the reconditioning of the cars, managing the sales team, managing the, uh, the uh, F&I people. And I could have just buried that car dealership in Leeds, right? That's actually what he was paying me to do. Like, hey, come in and help me bury this thing with Leeds. And I was like, holy crap, that's how it's been with every other business. I could have hired an operator, right, to manage our fleet of trucks, our fleet of pool cleaners, whatever service we provide. I could, ma- I could pay someone, and typically it's a sixty to $120,000 guy, right? It's not something we can't afford if... You know, I can't afford that. Well, if you could, if you had systems and processes where all you did was bury your, your, your customers and leads and you could do that because you were focusing, you could absolutely afford that. So that was really when I realized that I was prior doing everything from $10 an hour jobs up. Once I was able to focus only on doing key jobs, my life got better. My team was happier. I was happier. My business grew faster. I made a ton more profit. It's it just that one key I was able to turn, unlocked everything. I realized that there's only really three jobs that only I could do as an owner, right? Everything else I could sub out and frankly didn't pay as well. So I want to tell you what those three jobs are and and you can kind of take some time and look and go, is this where I'm spending my time? And if it's not and you're stuck, we now we've got it. We, now, now we know what's going on. So one is casting the vision for the company. I can't hire that out. There's not one other person on my team, no matter if it's a 10 person team or 110 person team, there's not one other person that cast the vision for the company. Uh, that's number one. Number two was setting up the systems that needed to be set up. And I think we talked about this in a, a podcast yesterday. The three systems are really getting custom for any service business, getting customers, getting employees, and accounting for the money. That's really it. An automated system that brings in the right customers and excludes the wrong ones, that brings in and keeps and trains the right employees or provides the services, um, and then something that counts the money. That's it. The money is always the easiest to sub out, right? That's something I'd always had. And um, depending on the size that you guys are at, most of you are probably pretty comfortable with the money piece of it. Either you've got an accountant or a bookkeeper, somebody that can make sure that your books are in order. So if you don't, that's the easiest, quickest one to get sorted out. You got to get that sorted out because if you don't have the money down, we got problems. Um, the second was the employees. And we talked about that in the last couple episodes. So if you need help with that, go, go to any of the last five episodes. We've talked all about core values. I kind of had figured that, that out with past values of if I just ran the, the company, if I was clear on what my core values were and I communicated them loudly and consistently, um, during the hiring process throughout everything, I would attract employees that shared those values as opposed to, um, fighting with people that didn't share those values and trying to act, try and make them act right, right? They would never act right. The customers was the last key to the operation of how do I get customers? That was the last key that, that opened everything up. Um, and then once you get all those set up, then you're free to, to set the vision, right? It's really hard to set the vision when you're constantly dealing with fires, putting on your Superman cape, dealing with this pissed off customer, collecting this money over here, dealing with the bank over there, this employee's going to quit. When you're dealing with all that stuff, really hard to cast the vision. So all of this allowed me to create a business with more freedom, more profit, more fun than I've ever had before. Uh, and also it allowed us to help thousands of owners of service businesses, right? Once I'd graduated and figured that out, uh, we spent the last five or six years helping owners of service businesses get the same freedom of time, of money, and choosing who they get to spend their life with and what they do. So once I put all three pieces together, I never had cash flow trouble again. Once I understood that my only job was to cast the vision and create the systems for uh, getting the customers, providing the service, and counting the money, um, that was it, right? That the money piece allowed me to um, bill in advance, right? Like when I got the money, I started setting up my business model in such a way I wasn't cash broke, right? That was the money piece. The culture piece allowed me to always have more talent coming in than I needed, right? That's all. You, you don't need all the talent. You just need a little bit more than 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 you need to hire coming to coming to you, kind of with your values and your beliefs and you're agreeing to play by the same rules or being excited to play by the same rules, right? Um, and then finally, that customer piece made sure there was always plenty of profit to hire the people I need and make all the other things spin. Um, that allowed me to get out of the day-to-day uh, worry of making it all happen. And I could really look forward to helping others, which is why we're doing what we're doing, right? That's allowed me, uh, after my first couple seven-figure sales, to spend the time to really pour into other uh, owners of, of service companies and help them 
make smarter, better mistakes than the ones I made as opposed to taking 20 years to figure this crap out to, to get it done in, in a matter of weeks. So if you're like, holy heck, this is what I need. This is where I'm at. I want to participate. Let's do this. Uh, go to growmyservicecompany.com. You can join our Facebook group, our videos, uh, podcast, um, books coming out, all that good stuff. And just to really, I want to, especially at the beginning of our relationship here, give a massive amount of value. If you want a, uh, when I sold my last brick and mortar business, I wrote a book that kind of summed up the almost 20 years of business experience I had. I'm a freaking genius. Why is this business so hard? If that feels like you, the book's for you. Here's what you need to do to get it. Um, you can go to Amazon, just pay 20 bucks. Or if you want to have a little more fun, um, subscribe to the podcast, rate, review, refer to the other service businesses in your world that you know and say, hey, I've got a guy that knows how to grow and you know someone else that you care about that you want to see grow. And just message me on Instagram. Um, grow, Instagram.com forward slash grow my service company. That's me. Just direct message me the word subscribed. And I will know that um, I'll take your word for it that you subscribed, rated, reviewed, referred, and we'll make sure we get a copy of my book. I'm a freaking genius. Why is this business so hard? Um, so excited to serve this community. So excited to help you guys get freedom and figure out the systems that you need to, um, to handle the money, to get all the clients that you need, to build a culture and a team of people that are, that are, the, the, that make your life better as opposed to stressing you out so you can cast a vision and, and be free to have this this business actually provide the life and the result that you wanted for your family. So growmyservicecompany.com. Uh, again, like I said, just message me, instagram.com forward slash growmyservicecompany. I'll get you a copy of my book. Just message me, subscribed, after you subscribed, rated, reviewed, and uh, let me know how we can give va value, right? You can also uh, direct message me questions or uh, ways that we can serve and give value. We're here to serve. Can't wait to get to know you. Talk soon.